Born in LA, raised in OC, schooled in SB, worked in NYC and SF, and now SoCal-based, Kimia is a creative powerhouse behind Kimia's Cravings, your ultimate go-to guide where to eat, drink, and play in style intertwined with puns and positivity. She has been featured in Forbes, BuzzFeed, Good Morning America Digital, and Huffington Post, to name a few. Throughout her career, she leveraged her personal interests and goals into her full-time career livelihood and transitioned from her extensive background in tech sales to content marketing and social media by utilizing her hobbies as her creative outlet. She thrives off of networking, building and cultivating relationships and long-term partnerships and all of the above and mentoring others. In her personal time, she enjoys spending time with her family and friends, staying active through hiking, hot yoga, boxing, cooking, and exploring hidden gems, playing tourist as a local wherever she goes. You can learn more about her at kimiacravings.com and follow her adventures at kimiacravings on Instagram. Thank you, Becca, for the intro. Um, yes, so like she said, like she said, I'm Kimia Kalbasi, and I'm here to teach you guys more about influencer marketing and brand and personal branding. And I heard that question quite a bit in the last panel, so I'm here to answer any further questions around that. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and I want this to be as interactive and engaging for you guys. Like, I don't want it to just be like, oh, me presenting, but feel free to ask questions along the way. Like, I don't have to share my deck. Like, if you guys have questions right off the bat, I'm more than happy to answer those. Um, if anyone wants to like kick off with questions, otherwise I can go right, dive right in. Oops, I started from, <laughs> from the end. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go over personal branding and how to monetize um, your content because especially in this day and age, everyone essentially is an influencer. Like, like the most trusted source in terms of like, whether you wanna buy something or try something out, we tend to glean in to our friends or peers or acquaintances that we know versus like major celebrities who are solely in it to, you know, get paid. Um, so in terms of, I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge my screen. Okay, so influencer marketing, content monetization. So how do I start? Um, Start by leveraging your niche and network. So for me personally, um, long story short, I, I always had, oh, I see some questions popping up. Oh, never mind. Okay, so, um, so in terms of where do I start? So I would say starting by, in terms of like leaning in towards your interests. So for me personally, like I've always had love for food and and lifestyle topics from like fitness to like healthy eating. And before COVID, um, I basically would go to a bunch of different restaurants and try them out because I used to work for a um, food and travel website where I would write articles and interview chefs um, and also like celebrity chefs and some restaurant owners. So I'd go to restaurants consistently. I would travel so many places. Um, like different countries and to essentially like experience like their hotels, um, like different launches. So obviously back then it was a little different than it is now. So now it's more towards leaning in uh, like healthy cooking and recipes like that. So basically my, my niche started off as a food blog where I'd post like whatever I was eating, all the different options restaurants would offer. So starting off with food, um, I would also go to a lot of different events where I'd meet people in different brands because I really wanted to expand my expand my network. So whether your interest is in food, yoga, um, arts and crafts, like whatever it is, it really lean into what you enjoy and what you're good at. So in terms of where do I start? I would say starting with a brand's wish list. Like let's say in terms of sticking with the food realm, like who are some brands that you really want to work with? Like whether that's like, like some of my favorite um, like food brands are like Perfect Bar or like Smart Sweets, um, Plenty um, Salad Greens, like some brands like that. Or for instance, if you're really into fashion, like you really want to work with Rick Revolve or like Cartier down the line or ASOS. So creating that wish list and like no no brand is too big or too small. Like like whatever it is, create that wish list. Kind of think of it as like your your brand wish list, like manifestation vision board. So create with that. Start with that list, and from there you can go on Instagram. Here I'm gonna actually go ahead and present a demo in terms of like how you can go ahead and do that. So like let's say for instance you really want to work with Revolve. 
Um, obviously they're a really big brand and, but you might want to work with some, some more niche, smaller brands. So um, some of you may already know this, but this is a really fun trick that I like to do. I'll essentially like to click the little carrot arrow and it'll populate a bunch of other relevant accounts that are similar to that. So maybe like, maybe let's say you reach out to Revolve, something as simple as like, whenever I reach out to brands, I simply message them and be like, hey, I'd love to collab. And then from there, they'll either, either respond and say like, oh, here, you can contact this direct contact. Like they'll give me an exact name or um, they'll be like, oh, we're not working with influencers right now. Like we'll keep your information handy. But regardless, I think it's it's fun to get reached out by brands, but I think it's the most fulfilling when you're the one like, you know, doing that outreach and picking the brands that you want and, you know, going from, from the outreach all the way to closing the deal to, you know, to essentially create content and get paid for it. So let's say you reach out to Revolve and they're not working with, with influencers right now, or maybe, maybe you're too small of an influencer, which is perfectly okay because like there's plenty of other smaller brands out there that would love to work with um, micro influencers. So from here, you can reach out to them and say like, hey, I'd love to collab. And then um, I can even share some here. Let me share an example of like how I like to pitch brands. Like, so let's say they give me an email. So I'll say, for instance, I was actually in the middle of crafting a response as for an example for this. So I reached out to Wild Fox. Here, let me show you what they're like. They're essentially like a casual stylish brand with that offers like yoga clothes and like casual apparel. So I went ahead and had DM them and they gave me their um, influencer team address. So you essentially start by introing yourself and sharing what the value is that you'll bring. Like even if it's not about being featured in so-and-so or like these different publications, like all, uh, although that helps, like I myself started from zero, started from scratch. So it's all about like, what can you bring to the table? What about your personal brand resonates with their personal brand? And like, in, in terms of like your demographic may have alignment there or um, your personal brand resonates with their mission statement. Um, and also your audience cares about that. So essentially you can reach out to them and share what kind of collaboration ideas you have and go from there. And also the biggest mistake, actually I just caught a mistake, which is perfect. So because I do this consistently and I have a same template, I have been personally caught in terms of like when you reach out to a brand and then you like forget to, um, you know, uh, edit the other brand name when you're when you're mentioning them multiple times so you want to definitely this is like the biggest no-no because then brands are like okay she's just <laughs> she's essentially um spraying and praying so obviously you want to have a strategic approach but then you want to also save your own time by having that template so going from the brand's wish list um Back to the point of, I don't have a ton of followers. Can I still make money? Absolutely. You want to embrace the rise of the nano and the micro influencers and show value over those vanity driven metrics, especially now with Instagram's algorithms being like way out of whack and making it harder to grow. Um, there is still opportunity here. So just to give you a visual of what that looks like um, in terms of like working with the macro influencers and the celebrities versus like the smaller ones, there's definitely a lot more bang for a brand's buck when they work with much smaller, uh, with much smaller um, creators, as you can see um, in this infographic. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. So going back, So in terms of how do I pitch myself, that goes back to sharing your why and why the brand should work with you, why you stand out and why your content resonates with their brands and their products and why you're so excited. Like you could be a super fan and you already have their products, but you generally want to showcase their products in your livelihood and show how, um, how your audience interacts with it as well. And then how do I know how much to charge? So know your worth, know your time and know your value. So it doesn't matter if you have a thousand followers or 10,000 or however many, 
it's all about like the time you spend on it and your knowledge, your experience. Like for instance, it could even take you like 10 minutes to create a post. And then obviously at that point you want to think about more so the value versus like, oh, it took me 10 minutes to make this, but that's why you don't want to value it so much on the, on the time spent, but rather the experience behind that. So for instance, my favorite quote is, um, it takes 10 years to create an overnight success. So basically with that, it's like, nobody sees the, like all the years of work that went behind it, but they only see what's on the surface. So even though something may have taken you five to 10 minutes, that doesn't, that doesn't devalue um, your, like how much you can charge. And there are also other calculators out there in terms of like, oh, how much should I charge? with this many followers but personally I think that's all baloney and I, I believe you are the manifester of how much you think your content is worth. So in terms of finding more opportunities my personal my personal favorite is that direct approach so you have that one-to-one -one interaction with that brand and then you can also cultivate relationships but there's so many other creator platforms on there from Aspire IQ, Grin, Popular Pays, Isaiah, Julius, Collectively, Stargazer, um, and you can also reach out to some agencies on via Instagram to be a part of their PR list. Um, but yes, the, and there's Maverick. There's so many platforms out there. Um, I'm more than happy to share if anyone wants to reach out. And then in terms of how do I negotiate, brands always have a budget in mind. And I can't tell you how many stories I've had where I'll be talking to a brand and they claim that they have no budget, but all of a sudden, once you say like, oh, sorry, I'm not doing like, it's like, I'm sorry, products don't pay for mortgage, Pro products don't pay for your bills. So um, all of a sudden, once you are assertive about like, I create content and like, it's a part of my livelihood, that's when all of a sudden, sometimes they're like, oh, actually we do have budget. So you always want to be stern with your value because you're not here to just create content for free because there is time and value behind that, especially when they utilize those assets for their own marketing like next thing you know i have so many, i can i have so many stories where um actually i'll just share a story right while we're on this topic um i remember almost two years ago i went to outside lands um with my friend it was through a press pass and we were by the outside land sign like taking pictures and then this photographer came up to us and he's like um, he's like, Hey, can you guys like hold this wine? And like, can I take some pictures of you guys? And we're like, Oh, sure. We didn't think anything of it at the moment. And, and then I remember my friend and I, after he took the pictures, we thought to ourselves, Oh, I wonder whatever happened to those pictures. Cause we never, like, we never got his information or anything. And a few months passed by. And next thing I know, a bunch of my friends are sending me screenshots of these like Instagram ads, um, of this wine brand and pictures of me and my friend holding it. And I was like, interesting and then um one of my friends he reached out to me he's like Kima you know you can be charging for this like did you know that they were going to use your, your picture for their marketing I was like what I had no idea then he's like yeah what contact them so I went ahead and contact excuse me contacted them and they they apologized and they're like we're so sorry blah 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 and like just like sent out like a statement and then they're like how can we compensate you for this so I confided with my friend because he's um he is in this world of influencer marketing and direct to consumer. So I asked him, I was like, oh, how should I approach this? And he's like, he said, um, charge them by the cost of impression, like how many times that your that ad was viewed. But when I went ahead with this proposal, they said like, oh, um, we can't do that because you weren't tagged in it, so we can't count it by the view. So I was like, okay, interesting. So then they're like, just name your price. So I said a thousand dollars because I was like, you know what, <laughs> like, I'm just going to come up with something. But if, in all honesty, I don't even know it. that could have been, I could have still been lowballing myself because, well, I don't know how many times that ad was viewed, especially with how many people were sending it to me. So long story short, you have to know your worth and you have to be stern with what, what you, with what your work is. And especially when someone's using your face or your, your creative to essentially make the, put money in their pocket, that's when you have to draw the line. Um, so very many valuable lessons, le many valuable lessons learned there. And you always want to read, read the fine print because a lot of times these brands will, they essentially want to take it, like not that they, they're out to get influencers, but they want to essentially get the most bang out of their buck. So uh, in a lot of times in contracts, I've seen like very itty little fine print that will say 
uh, unlimited usage. So it's like for years on end, they can use your content and you won't even get paid for it. So that is a big no-no in our book. So always ask for a budget and you don't want to, especially if you have a media kit, um, I can, oh, I'm always more than happy to talk further about that. Feel free to reach out, but always don't ever list your prices anywhere because brand to brand that can vary. So if, for instance, obviously, if you're talking to a bigger brand like Revolve, um, that they have obviously have a bigger budget than like this ma and pa type boutiques um, brand. So uh, moving forward, how do I know if an opportunity is legitimate? I'm sure we've all been um, <laughs> spammed with those comments in our posts where they say like, like, OMG, like would love to collab with this, like those really generic, like robot looking accounts. They'll be like, oh my God, OMG, love your style. Like, like those ones are definitely spam. And then a lot of times, even when they go into your DMs, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Or if they're like charging you for shipping or something where it's, excuse me, if it's just like, if you have, I always believe in trusting your gut. So if you have an inkling that it's um, a flop, I say don't proceed. So, and then obviously you can always ask around as well, but that is the high level version of um, what it takes to, in terms of monetizing your content in a nutshell, do we have any questions right off the bat? Oh, I see, I have a question. Go ahead, Monique. Wait. Monique, Hello. if you want, you can, yeah, unmute yourself and ask your okay, question. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, my question is, um, yeah, I, I create my own content. Um, I have a music blog, so it's not like my pictures of me or anything. I, I make pictures of um, of musicians and bands and stuff. And obviously when I invite them to um, be featured on my blog because I make my own content for my blog, I don't charge them for the photos. Um, and I say, okay, well then, you know, and I give them the photos that they can use for their own Instagrams and stuff. Um, and that had been working for a little while, but now that I'm kind of working with a few bands and artists that have a little bit more of a following, I've noticed that uh, my photos are being used in places, like they, uh, they keep on sort of going further and further away and it becomes harder to control. Um, and I've seen my photos pop up on other blogs and things and there's no credit and, I'm sort of a meek, shy type who, you know, uh, I didn't have a contract in the first place. They're just sort of indie musicians. Like, they don't know. I don't know. But um, in my, I, I have a problem when they're being used on other blogs and I don't even get credit or anything. And so, A, like, how, how would you recommend going about that? And B, like, I know this is really silly, but is there any sort of like wording you can help me with? Because I'm, I'm, I can be really shy about these things and a bit of a pushover. And if I want to grow my online presence and what whatever I'm doing, I need to not be so. Shy. Anyway, thank you. Absolutely. Oh, I I hear you on that, Monique. Absolutely. Um, First of all, the fact that you're aware of this is already a step forward in the right direction. And for whatever has happened in the past or is currently happening, you can now put a halt to it. But it's like all about, first of all, taking a step back. You're like, okay, I know there's worth and value behind my content. So how can I, in the most diplomatic, assertive, but still in a kind-hearted way, um, like essentially make that true. So for instance, moving forward, I mean, obviously more than welcome to like, we can take this one-to-one um, -one offline another time so I can like share with you some template ideas but right off the bat from a high level I would recommend that you when you're interacting with these artists or whoever it is that in your emails or in your messaging you make it clear that like oh in the case that my content will be repurposed I would like to know, I would like the links to be shared and if they're and I do require a budget um, when my content is being um, showcased on like, these other blogs, because for instance, for all you know, if you could be featured on a big blog, but then your name's not shown, your handle's not shown. So it's like all credit is out the door. Like I personally don't even believe in exposure because exposure doesn't pay the bills, but even like, it's like, you're even lost the exposure component of it. So 
right off the bat, I would say from moving forward in your communications, you always um, add a line in there, like in the case that there is there's interest in my content, I do require a budget, or you can even say, you can, depending on who you're talking to, you can um, meddle with the wording. Like I do uh, require a small fee. So like, you know, so because payment always deter, tends to deter people, but as long as you say it in like an artful manner, people are respectful and um, like are always keen on hearing you out. Like I said, sometimes people act like they have no budget, but as soon as you put your foot down, they're like, oh, just kidding. We have like $500 or like a thousand dollars available. What can we get for that? So um, does that help? Does that like help uh, ease the pain a little bit? Uh, yes, there we go, sorry. Uh... Yes, it does. Thank you. I, I, I even like had a photograph of mine uh, featured in a in a German magazine, a print German magazine that I bought myself. But like I, you know, it was there and it's a popular magazine and no name on it or obviously no money or anything. I was just like, ah, but, you know, so uh, frustrating. But no, I appreciate that the 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 wording is really helpful to say it at the beginning because, yeah, uh, Thank you. The, the wording definitely helps. I can be awkward about these things. Oh, absolutely. And there's no wrong or right answer. There's no awkwardness. It's all more so about like how you say it versus what you say. And um, I just put my email in here. So if anyone has one off questions, um, I'm more than happy to answer them. So Monique, if, like, I'm more than happy to help you with like templates. And then honestly, like even like, I don't like to look at it as like, oh, money lost for all those opportunities. Like I, I even with learning to how to monetize my blog, it like took me almost three to four years. I, I can't tell you how many stories I'd have from like my parents would be like, Kimia, like, what are you doing with this blog and stuff? You're not even making money. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm like, I was essentially just creating content for fun, but I'm like, it will get there. Like, it's not all about like creating money. I mean, it's not all about just like making yeah. money right off the bat. So mm -hmm. anyway, keep doing what you're doing and have fun with it. Because if we like tie ourselves to these like fake metrics for ourselves like we're just going to drive ourselves crazy and it's like it's like where's the fun in that and like that's and then it's no longer a creative outlet so yeah. that's my two cents on that um hey thank you that's really helpful absolutely any other questions i actually have a quick question kind of going off of that and your experience when they were using your photo for the advertisement without consent with your experiences with this when you're you know, going up to kind of battle for yourself, do you ever get a legal team involved? Or when do you kind of draw the line of, I'm going to do this all myself, write up my contracts, and then what has your experience been with getting a lawyer involved? Oh, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, I have never gotten a lawyer involved, but I do have an agent. I don't work with her as closely anymore because personally, I love, I like to do, I like to do the hustle and bustle myself from start to finish. And it is nice to have an agent in terms of getting those bigger deals, but also because she takes 30% and I get the remaining, I'm like, oh, that's kind of a big chunk. So um, in terms of like vouching for myself on that legal standpoint, it, it does help to have that alternative person with you but I say you are your own best advocate and at the end of the day we're all in it for ourselves so I would say like in all honesty even with like all this influencer stuff like I'm like I didn't have a guidebook I just like learned it as I went and like I had to go through all these flips and flops to even like be able to share this information with you guys so but in terms of to answer your question directly I have never dealt with like a legal team but I would say because you're your best advocate, like read, 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 read every fine print. Like I can't tell you how many times I would just sign contracts because I'm like, oh, like, la, 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 this is so cool. I'm just like signing contracts. It's like, oh no, there's like, oh my God, they have like rights to use this for ads for like, for the rest of their, <laughs> like for the rest of their life and all that. So, um, but yeah, again, if, if you ever run into that, I'm more than happy to help you um, on one off. Um, oh, did you have another question? Awesome. Thank you. If you want to go ahead with um, Angelica's question. Of course. Do you use affiliate? <clears throat> so Angelica asked, do you use affiliate links on your blog? Any tips on how to get started with that as a beginner? If so. Yes, I have used with, if I have used affiliate links, but personally for me, um, because I look at affiliate as solely commission, I, I'm personally more of an avid believer in terms of like fixed rates. So it's like whatever you're creating, you're already getting a payment for that versus affiliate it's like you create the content you're not getting paid for that but it's like if you happen to generate sales from that then you get 
I mean, there's no wrong or right answer, but that's my personal preference. I'd rather get paid for the work that I've already done versus basing it off of commission. But I mean, best case scenario would be having both of those. So if you can get paid for that content and also be tied to an affiliate link, that's awesome. So um, there are so many, if you have like, going back to like the brand's wish list, if you go to each of those brands' websites or their Instagram handles, like a lot of them, either in their highlight Instagram highlights, they'll have um, their affiliate um, landing pages. Or if you go on their website directly and scroll down, they'll have like affiliate partners pages that you can fill out as well. And let's see, oh, of course. Any other questions? I wanna be cognizant of time since I know we have two minutes or forever keep your peace. <laughs> Cool. I think, um, I think that's everything. Thank you so much. This was really, really helpful. It's always, I think it's always helpful to hear from other industries too. I know a lot of people like in the past guests was more in the magazine sphere and it's always interesting to hear from another sphere and how they overlap at the same time and getting advice from that. So thank you again. Thank you Absolutely. so much, Kimia. Of course, Becca, it was so great to be here. And I have my email up there. So don't hesitate or don't be afraid to reach out. I'm more than happy to help. Hey, thank you again.